Hey, have you all ever wondered how long it would take to degrade your CPU with an overclock? Yeah, me too. That's why I set out to find out. That doesn't make much sense. But I set out to uh, do an experiment of how long it would take for a CPU to degrade at high voltages with high heat and a high overclock. Listen, thanks for watching. I'm Jeff the IT Guy, and here in the Batcave, we do stupid stuff all the time. It's true. I've done a lot, maybe not real crazy here on the channel, but anyways, I'll have to do experiments. I'll have to find out what's the best. So listen, if you like cool stuff like this, go ahead and leave me a subscribe before we get into the results. Um, it really helps me out. I've got a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers before December. Um, that would be one year since I started this channel and I set out to get a thousand subscribers before one year and it would be go a long way to help me um, reach that goal if you would go ahead and subscribe and I'm just going to be real with you all. Um, it would allow me to be able to invest more into this channel which would then in turn allow you all to get to see cooler stuff. Um, and so that's really all I had to say about it. So let's talk about the system and then let's get into the results. So the system that we're using is a Ryzen 3 1200. Now, I know it's a cheap part, which is the reason why I went through this experiment with it. Uh, it's a very cheap part. Uh, it's not expensive and I have one laying on hand I'm using a B450 motherboard and like a $40 graphics card because I needed a graphics output, you know, whatever. And we are using the uh, RGB AMD cooler. Originally, I was using a water cooler. However, it did not get hot enough under those conditions to where I thought we were going to get results. And so that is the same. Okay, so for our test, we ran OCCT uh, as our stress test. We ran it as the large data set with the AVX2 um, instruction set. And so we ran that for anywhere between seven and nine hours a day. And so as you can imagine, it was very loud. It got very hot and it used a lot of power, which is, those are all three very true. And so during this time, I monitored um, the temperature each for each day, see what the max was. I monitored the voltage and I monitored the frequency to make sure that everything was going smoothly. Okay, so at the end of each stress test, at the end of the seven to nine hours, I ran three benchmarks. And these benchmarks were Cinebench, Geekbench, and ASUS's RealBench. And then at the end of each one of those, I recorded the performance. This way I could track to see if there was any performance loss um, along with all the other tracking that we did. So if you've kept up so far, we've talked about um, the stress test that we used and the length of time that we used it. We talked about the three benchmarks that we ran and we talked about what the system is. So let's talk about the overclock. And so for the Ryzen 3 1200, I started out at an overclock of four gigahertz. Yes, I was able to get four gigahertz on it. Um, and I had the voltage at 1.45 volts. Uh, this voltage um, was what I had to have. I wanted high voltage in here so I could test and see how long it would take for the CPU to degrade. And so, at four gigahertz, I was able to run the stress test the first time for about two hours before it would no longer hit four gigahertz at 1.45 volts. Okay, so at that point, yeah, I guess I could have called it done. However, that was not satisfactory to me. Um, saying, oh, it takes two hours is not a satisfactory answer. I wanted to really see how long it took. And so I backed it down to 3.9 gigahertz, still at the 1.45 volts, um, that was the offset. And so it would really fluctuate a little bit with the voltage, whether it was you know, 1.39 or 1.44, etc. cetera, um, it would fluctuate throughout, uh, depending, throughout the test. And so I actually ran this test from August 19th um, to August 27th. And so that was, however long that is, <laughs> um, eight days. So it was eight days that I ran this test. And when I wasn't running the stress test, I left the computer on uh, all the time. So it was 
at all times getting a high amount of voltage. Um, it, you know, it was still getting this massive amount of voltage, even though I wasn't running it at 100% 24-7. And so, after the first full day of testing at 1.45 volts, um, with a 3.9% uh, 3.9 gigahertz overclock, uh, you know, it, it did fairly well. So let's talk about the performance numbers for that day. Okay, so for, for that day with Cinebench, we had a single core, or I mean, yeah, for single uh, Cinebench, had a score of 1,050. For Geekbench in the single core, we had a score of 873, and a multi-core of 2665. So that was sort of my baseline to really, that was the first time I ran tests at the end of the day. So that was my baseline for, you know, to track the performance of the system. Uh, the real bench encoding um, was like 91,681 and the system score was 61,128. Okay, and the max temperature that day was 75 degrees. And this was on the X53 280 mil, or 240 mil water cooler. Okay, so the second day that I ran it, uh, still the same voltage, still the same gigahertz. The max temperature that day was 76.88. And on this day was when I really started to try and push the temperature higher. Um, you know, I wanted to, to push temperature even higher on this day. And it was still with the 240 millimeter cooler. Uh, the score on that day for Cinebench was 1100. The Geekbench was 914. Uh, for the single core, multi core was 2987, and the real bench uh, encoding was 100,109, 100, and the system score was 52,673. And so, throughout this, you're going to see the scores kind of fluctuate. Um, for some reason, that's just how it is, though. It just started to fluctuate. Uh, the third day that I ran this, test, I changed from the water cooler to the AMD cooler. Um, and this really put my temps in the area that I wanted them. And so the max temp that day was 86.13 degrees Celsius. So I finally hit it. It was averaging around 78 degrees, uh, which is I thought was the sweet spot. Uh, still at 1.45 volts, still at 3.9 gigahertz. And each, like I said, each of these days, the stress test was ran for about seven to nine hours. Um, on that day, the Cinebench score was 1,105. The um, Geekbench score was 920 for single core, 2,964 for multi-core. Uh, the real bench was 1,100, 261. The system score was like 70,000. So, like I said, it's fluctuating. But let's really just, I don't want to take that one out. Let's just look at the Cinebench and the Geekbench. On the fourth day, this is a, a little bit of a wild day. This is the day I was like, okay, I've done it. Um, the fourth day, max temp of 87.63. So it was very high, for a lot higher that day. Uh, the Cinebench score of 832. A Geekbench score of 891, single core and 2806 multi-core. Really kind of weird that day, um, but I still, I wanted to do it another day to see if it had the same results. The next day, the following day after that, um, max temperature of 89.25 degrees. So this was like, okay, we're really getting hot now. It's, and then I noticed that it was actually starting to take more volts to achieve that 3.9 gigahertz. So it's actually starting to pull more from the offset. On that day, the Geekbench score was 1112, or Cinebench was 1112. Um, Geekbench was 919 for single core, multi-core was 2950. Okay, so the scores came back up that day. They still were not at their highest, so, but it did come back up. The next day, um, which would have been, I think the eighth day of this was the highest, scores. Uh, 87, uh, the max temp was 87.5. It may have been a little bit cooler in my office than what it had been. Um, Cinebench was 1128. Uh, 
single or the geek bench was 923 for single core multi core was 2968 so i did notice that there was still the voltage was still pretty high and then the final day that i ran the test i was i was i was very glad when this happened this was, the system was very loud it was very hot um i was very glad max temp uh was like 90 degrees um the Cinebench score was 1,060, so it's pretty low, right? It's going down. Um, the Geekbench score was 890, all right. And the multi-core for Geekbench was 2745. Uh, these are the lowest scores I've had. I was like, yeah, you know, except for that one off day. What really solidified this final day for me is that it would no longer hit 3.9 gigahertz. It had degraded enough that it would no longer hit 3.9 gigahertz, and I did it. I proved CPU degradation in a scientific way. That's right. Here, on this channel, we did it. All of us together. It took about, like I said, about nine days, and we did it. Uh, so that's, it's really exciting to think that I was able to, to, to actually see. It happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. Um, I don't think many people's out there like, hey, man, I'm going to check CPU degradation. You know, I can't wait to kill one. So my intention was not to kill the CPU, but to see when it actually started to degrade. And so after nine days of running a 100% load stress test at high volts on this thing, uh, as well as keeping the volts higher 24-7, um, after nine days, the CPU showed significant degradation in the fact that it would no longer hit the 3.9 gigahertz overclock. Um, the system shut down. It would not boot anymore at 3.9. It would boot at 3.8 at 1.45. And the volts were still high. So the voltage still stayed high. Um, and the overclock went down, which meant that performance went down. The silicon had been degraded inside the CPU, and that's what we set out to do. We set out to prove CPU degra degra degradation. And so, in conclusion, don't leave just yet. In conclusion, if you are running an overclock at 1.45 gigahertz, uh, or 1.45 volts, and you're hitting temperatures of like 75 to 85 degrees, you are going to kill your CPU, or at least degrade it. It's going to take a while, but it's going to degrade. Um, you know, AMD motherboards, I had one fry, two chips. I had one fry, a six core and an eight core, like two years ago, because the volts would go up to like 1.45 um, stock. And it was killing my chips. I actually had two of them die. Now, AMD replaced them, but... I tell you what, 1.45 volts is the rising killer. Uh, you know, if Intel wants to win this CPU war, they just need to go out and crank everything to 1.45 volts and watch it die, because it will happen. So if you're running an overclock, don't go to 1.45 volts. It's not going to end well for you. Um, don't do it. You know, I, I proved it. I proved that it doesn't work. You'll have a little bit of fun for a little while, woo, and then you're going to be like, oh, man. Now I gotta go buy, you know, something. And I really didn't know what would give up first in this battle. I didn't know if it would be the CPU, the motherboard, or the power supply, because I'm not using the expensive motherboard. It's only a $70 motherboard. It's like a $50 CPU. And like, I mean, in today's standards, the power supply is probably worth like four pounds of gold. But I mean, it's only like a, I think it's a CX650 or something from Corsair. So it's not like super high end. However, that being said, I, I wanted to find out, and we found out. So I want to thank every one of you all for watching this video. Um, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Let, I mean, I really do want to hear your comments. This is something that is really exciting to me, and I want to hear your comments about this. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, because it'd be really cool to do some cooler stuff like this, but until I have a subscriber count that really people are going to see, um, I'm only limited to my funds, so it would be really nice if I had enough subscribers to where I could go and say, hey, 
you know, I'd really like to do this sponsored deal or something. So it would really help me out if you would subscribe. Like I said, leave a comment. I want to hear what you have to say. And stay tuned for some more killer videos.